Click, clack, 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 clack. Narrated by Quinton and Isabel. Before you take me to bed, or you tell me a story, do you actually need me to take you to bed? I asked the boy. He thought for a moment, then with intense seriousness, yes, actually, I think you do. Because I finished my homework, and so it's my bedtime, and I'm a bit scared. Not very scared, just a bit. But it is a very big house, and lots of times the lights don't work, and it's sort of dark. I reached over and tussled his hair. I can understand that, I said. It is a very big hot house, he nodded. We were in the kitchen, where it was light and warm. I put down my magazine on the kitchen table. What kind of story would you like me to tell you? Well, he said, thoughtfully. I don't think it should be too scary, because when I go to bed, I'll just be thinking about monsters the whole time. But if it isn't just a little bit scary, I won't be interested. And you make up scary stories, don't you? I know she says that's what you do. She exaggerates. I write stories, yes. Nothing that's been published yet, though. And I write lots of different kinds of stories. But you do write scary stories. Yes. The boy looked up at me from the shadows by the door while I was waiting. Do you know any stories about Click Clack the Rattle Bag? I don't think so. Those are the best sorts of stories. Do they tell them at your school? Sometimes. What's a Click Clack the Rattle Bag story? He was a precocious child and was unimpressed by his sister's boyfriend's ignorance. You could see it on his face. Everybody knows them. I don't, I said, trying not to smile. He looked at me as if he was trying to decide whether or not I was pulling his leg. He said, I think maybe you should take me up to my bedroom and then you can tell me a story before I go to sleep. But a very not scary story because I'll be in my bedroom then and it's actually a bit dark up there too. I said, shall I leave a note for your sister telling her where we are? You can, but you'll hear when they get back. The front door is very slammy. He walked out of the warm, cosy kitchen and into the hallway of the big house where it was chilly and draughty and dark. I flicked the light switch, but nothing happened. The bulb's gone, the boy said. That always happens. Our eyes adjusted to the shadows. The moon was almost full and the blue-white moonlight shone in through the high windows on the staircase down in the hall. We'll be all right, I said. Yes, said the boy soberly. I'm very glad you're here. He seemed less precocious now. His hand had found mine and he held onto my fingers comfortably, trusting as if he'd known me all his life. I felt responsible for an adult. I did not know the feeling I had for a sister who was my girlfriend was love. Not yet. But I liked that the child treated me as if there was something unsettling about the empty house. Oh yeah, and if there was something unsettling about the empty house, I wouldn't have admitted it for words. The stairs creaked beneath the thread bars their carpet. Click clacks, said the boy, are the best monsters ever. Are they from television? I don't think so. I don't think any people know where they come from. Mostly, they come from the dark. Good place for a monster to come. Yes. We walked along the upper corridor into the shadows, walking from patch of moonlight to patch of moonlight. It really was a big house. I wished I had a flashlight. They come from the dark, said the boy, holding on to my hand. I think they're made of dark, and they come in when you don't pay attention. That's when they come in. And then they take you back to their... Not nests. What's a word that's like nests but not? House? No, it's not a house. 
there. You were silent. Then I think that's the word. Yes, there. He squeezed my hand. He stopped talking. So we take they take people who don't pay attention back to their lair. And what do they do then? You're monsters. Do they suck all the blood out of you like vampires? He snorted. Vampires don't suck all the blood out of you. They only drink a little bit just to keep them going and, you know, flying around. Click clacks are much scarier than vampires. I'm not scared of vampires, I told him. Me neither. I'm not scared of vampires either. Do you want me to know? Do you want to know what click clacks do? They drink you, said the boy. Like a coke. Like a coke? Coke is very bad for you, said the boy. If you put a tooth in coke and in the morning it will be dissolved in nothing. That's how bad coke is for you and why you must always clean your teeth every night. I'd heard the coke story as a boy but had been told as an adult that it wasn't true. But a lie which promoted dental hygiene was a good lie and I let it pass. Click clacks. Drink you said the boy. First, they bite you, and then you go all ishy inside, and all your meat, and all your brains, and everything, except your bones and your skin, turns into a wet, milkshakey stuff, and then Click clack sucks it out through the holes where your eyes used to be. That's disgusting, I told him. Did you make it up? We'd reached the last flight of stairs all the way into the big house. No, I can't believe you kids make up stuff like that. You didn't ask me about the rattle bag, he said. Right, what's the rattle bag? Well, he said, sagely, soberly, a small voice from the darkness beside me. Once you're just bones and skin, they hang you up on a hook and you rattle in the wind. So, what do these click clacks look like? Even as I asked him, I wished I could take the question back and leave it unasked. I thought, huge spidery creatures, like the one in the shower that morning. I'm afraid of spiders. I was relieved when the boy said, they look like what you aren't expecting what you aren't paying attention to. We were climbing wooden steps now. I held on to the railing on my left, held his hand with my right. As he walked beside me, it smelled like dust and old wood that high in the house. The boy's tread was certain though, even though the moonlight was scarce. Do you know what story you're going to tell me to put me to bed? He asked. It doesn't actually have to be scary. Not really. Maybe you could tell me about this evening. Tell me what you did? That won't make much of a story for you. My girlfriend just moved into a new place on the edge of town. She inherited it from an aunt or someone. It's very big and very old. I'm going to spend my first night with her. Tonight. So I've been waiting for an hour or so for her and her housemates to come back with the wine and an Indian takeaway. See? said the boy. There was that precocious amusement again. But all kids can be insufferable sometimes when they think they know something you don't. It's 
probably good for them. You know all that, but you don't think. You just let your brain fill in the gaps. He pushed open the door to the attic room. It was perfectly dark now, but the opening door disturbed the air. And I heard things rattle gently, like dry bones in thin bags. In the slight wind, click, clack, click, clack. Like that. I would have pulled away then, if I could, but small, firm fingers pulled me forward, unrelentingly, into the never-ending dark.